Hey folks, Luke Mullen here from the Lincoln Journal Star. Uh, just a solo venture, Life in the Red today. I wanted to provide you with a quick recruiting update uh, as we head into a very busy recruiting period, uh, not just in April, but of course in the months that follow. Uh, Nebraska football going to be building its 2025 recruiting class and all those efforts start here in April. Um, just to walk you through the timeline, what to expect for the next couple months. Uh, April in particular, uh, we've noticed this as we've been around the stadium, as we've been around the practice facility, there are a lot of unofficial visitors uh, coming to campus here in April, many of them future recruiting targets, uh, guys who could potentially come back for an official visit soon, uh, players who the program, who coaches are familiar with, uh, potentially, you know, might not have a spot for them yet, unsure, you know, it could be a walk-on. There's a lot of different uh, aspects to it, and of course, not all of them are 2025 guys, a lot of 2026, 2027 guys as well, uh, looking to the future here and the spring important, uh, just to get them on campus, get them around the coaches, uh, let them become familiar with what a Nebraska football practice looks like. Uh, so that is something important that's going on here in April uh, in terms of unofficial visitors. But as always, the red-white spring game is a major, major recruiting weekend. Um, you will see this nationally, uh, spring games across the, across the country, but I promise you very few of them look how they do at Nebraska uh, with the amount of fan support, um, kind of the, the total game day atmosphere that you get around here in Lincoln. Um, it's a very big recruiting weekend for Nebraska because of all those factors. And it will be again, uh, as we confirm some of these official visits, we're expecting probably 8, 10, 12. It's a little bit hard uh, to project out here a couple weeks uh, from that spring game. But a lot of official visitors will come for that, um, come for that game. That being said, don't necessarily expect a ton of commitments uh, to happen in April because this process is going to stretch out to the summer. Um, end of April through May, expect Nebraska coaches to be on the road. Uh, there is an open recruiting period. Coaches can go make in-home visits with prospects. Uh, you can visit them at their school, talk with their families at their house. Um, very important um, in terms of developing that relationship, keeping it up. Um, and as that calendar flips to May and then it goes to June, that's when you can expect the commits to start happening. And June is going to be the month to watch in particular uh, here at Nebraska. They're going to be hosting camps. Um, coaches are going to be out recruiting as well. And a lot of official visits will happen in June. We're already seeing some prospects confirm uh, that they will be coming for those official visits. So that is going to be the thing to watch. And especially before it gets to July, I think you can expect a very large portion of this class to be built and we got to update you now because the guys who come in April, visit unofficially, then come back in the summer, those are the guys who are the backbone of this 2025 recruiting class. So that's the calendar to expect. Um, to brief you on how the class looks right now, uh, only three commits at the moment, and they are all players from within the state. Uh, Omaha North defensive lineman Tyson Terry, Miller North athlete Caden Vermoss, and Bishop Newman running back Connor Booth. Those are the three guys in the class, um, all talented players, and we'll get into all sorts of breakdowns, you know, when they eventually commit and sign with the program. It's a, a very long way away from that before December, that early signing date, uh, before this whole recruiting process comes to an end. But all three of those guys, you know, bona fide Power Five recruits had offers elsewhere, uh, were very quick uh, in their support of Nebraska to commit um, and be those first few guys in the class. But it's worth noting that. Three players is, is not an abnormal amount at this time, but it may reflect a little bit of the desires for Nebraska for this class because two very, very large groups came in before them. Uh, 28 players committed in the 2023 class, uh, 31 in 2024, and I expect that number to be considerably smaller this time around. Uh, perhaps 20-ish commits would be an early projection. Um, just to throw out a number for you right now, could be more. Uh, certainly because it depends on NIL funding. Uh, that's a major part of the equation now for, for collegiate recruits. It's not just a scholarship offer. It's what can you do with NIL? You know, how can you build your roster um, and work around the scholarship limits that Nebraska has dealt with these last couple of seasons? Uh, very cognizant of that 85-man scholarship limit that they have to get to by the fall. And it, all, all accounts from the coaches, uh, they're very confident that there won't be any issues with getting that uh, getting that number sorted out by the fall this time around, but keep kicking the can, can down the road and eventually you got to address it. 
uh, the scholarship numbers. So perhaps a smaller class, but at the same time going for top talent maybe then to prioritize in the smaller class. So uh, that's how the setup is, the system that we can expect. And I want to walk you through some of the visitors to watch here over the next couple of weeks, especially again, as I said, that spring game weekend. So a very major focus from two recruiting hotbeds. Uh, Nebraska recruits very well. Texas and California, uh, that's where we're going to see a lot of these prospects coming to Nebraska for that spring game. Uh, but before that, a recent visitor, and as I record this, it's a Thursday, and just today, a four-star recruit uh, out of St. Louis, running back Jamarian Parker. He was at Nebraska football's practice today, and he is certainly a name to watch. He is former Arkansas commit, who just decommitted two to three weeks ago. I uh, had his name back out there. One of the top, top uncommitted recruiting, uncommitted running backs uh, in this recruiting class. You look at his numbers, what he did playing at a very high level there uh, in St. Louis, ran for 1,600 yards, 22 touchdowns, averaged 11.2 yards per carry last year. And this is going to be a common theme as I rattle off some of these guys. He's got big time track and field speed. He can be a sprinter. Um, and Nebraska especially pushing after him when you consider they did not add a high school running back in that 2024 class. Quentin Ives was there in 2023. He redshirted. Um, and, of course, they added transfer Dante Dowdle, who has several years of eligibility. Uh, but particularly with the running back position, you want to maintain those young guys coming in, uh, coming into the program. And certainly Jamari and Parker, he does look like one of those top targets. And like I said, you expect guys who visit in the visit in the spring, come back in the fall, uh, or vi come back in the summer, excuse me, to be some of those guys who may be committed by the fall. Well, Jamari and Parker, he's expected uh, in June to return for an official visit. So that would be a big weekend uh, to see if he's still uncommitted at that point, if Nebraska could be in a position uh, to land him. Again, a top four-star running back right there. Uh, later in the month, again, uh, much of the vis these visits right before the spring game or specifically that weekend, a uh, four-star edge rusher slash defensive lineman, Chad Woodfork. Uh, he's from Humble, Texas, which is in the Houston area, if you don't know where Humble is. Believe me, I didn't know. I didn't know before I looked it up. But uh, you would know certainly that if a guy who's coming out of Houston, who's a big-time pass rusher, edge rusher, is being recruited by Nebraska, then you know Terrence Knighton is involved because he's the coach who leads the way on all of Nebraska's recruiting efforts in Houston, uh, does a great job recruiting that area, and especially when there is a prospect in his position group coming out uh, from, that, from that area, he's going to be all after them. Uh, so Terrence Knighton certainly pushing uh, for Wood Fork, who is four-star edge rusher, very talented prospect, uh, has a lot of long-term potential at that position. Uh, several other positions, of course, on the needs list for Nebraska with this recruiting class. Linebacker among them, a lot of change, uh, roster overturn at linebacker the last couple of years. Well, top prospect from pretty close to Nebraska, Kansas City area linebacker Dawson Merritt out of Stillwell, Kansas. Uh, one of the top 100 national recruits and had a dominant monster 2023 uh, high school season, recorded 83 tackles, 17 for a loss, seven sacks, three forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries. Um, and he's certainly seen his recruitment pick up over the last several months, uh, not just around the Midwest, but certainly going national, uh, you know, SEC interest, um, all sorts of things from the Big Ten as well. And Nebraska pushing for him. He's another one of those guys. Unofficial visit scheduled for the spring, could return in the summer for the official. Um, he's one of those to watch, again, as a, a fairly local player there uh, out of the Kansas City area. But a lot more local players uh, than just out of Kansas City. There is going to be an in-state focus this spring. Um, admittedly, spring is a big time for the out-of-state visitors, um, as opposed to perhaps the players who are inside Nebraska are visiting elsewhere uh, in April, and then we'll maybe come back and take a hard look at Nebraska in the fall when it's a little bit harder to travel. You've got high school games on Fridays. You know, you can't easily get somewhere on Saturday. So it, it's admittedly not the biggest focus of the spring, uh, to lock down those in-state guys. But as I've said, relationship building, um, you know, being consistent, having those coaches who are keep telling you, keep sticking with you, that's a big, big thing for high school recruits. So there are several in-state guys who Nebraska will be uh, maintaining and hoping that will, they will have visit here in the spring. Uh, among them, two, two tight ends, uh, Chase Lofton plays for Millard South, Ryman Zebert, really high-rising recruit, plays for Platteview. And then here in Lincoln, 
uh, wide receiver Jackson Carpenter out of Lincoln Southwest. Uh, spoke with him yesterday. He said he expects to take in a practice uh, and again, return for the red white spring game, expects to be a visitor uh, unofficially for that one. He is taking a hard look at Nebraska as well as Kansas, uh, two of his top two. And Miller North athlete Pierce Mubury, a uh, teammate of Caden Vermas, and picked up a scholarship offer several months ago. And he told me uh, when that happened that uh, he was sure that Caden was going to push hard for him to, to check out Nebraska and eventually land there. Uh, those two high school teammates be interested to see what happens there. Very talented athlete. And as well, the top-ranked player in the state, linebacker out of Omaha Westside, Christian Jones, a uh, guy who's had lots of Big Ten, SEC interests, Notre Dame in particular, pushing hard for him. Uh, Nebraska, I know, certainly wants to schedule him for an, un for an official visit, but he remains uncommitted. Uh, seems like for several of these players, again, this process can stretch through the fall. Uh, so that's worth noting for the in-state guys from within uh, the state's borders. But several other recruits, uh, we'll run through them quickly here as we wrap up this recruiting update. Uh, Broderick Scholl, he's a big-time offensive line prospect out of Oklahoma, uh, projects potentially as an impact offensive tackle. Uh, this is something Nebraska does often. Look for those big, mean guys from around the Midwest. You can come uh, get in and visit. Uh, particularly those tackle prospects are really hard uh, to land. You know, not, not a ton of elite tackle prospects um, in most recruiting classes. So he's going to be a big focus as Nebraska looks for its offensive line. Um, and the top-ranked recruit, as we talk about these official visitors expected for the red-white spring game, out of San Antonio, uh, athlete Michael Terry III. He's top 20 national recruit, according to 247 Sports. And in particular, he is, I think, the archetype of what Nebraska wants in a recruit, uh, a total do-it-all athlete. You look at his junior film, played running back, played wide receiver, had some snaps at quarterback too, you know, could be a linebacker or safety as he projects there. And as I've said, track and field, that is the number one predictor of Nebraska going after an athlete, a guy who can play multiple positions. If he's a sprinter, he's got speed, Nebraska wants him. And that's certainly the case with Terry, uh, elite, elite speed, uh, track and field star as well. That's also the case for another big time Texas recruit uh, out of Dallas Skyline, linebacker Elijah Barnes. Um, again, track and field speed, a lot of SEC interest in him. He's a guy who closes ground very quickly, uh, makes up a lot of room there, uh, very athletic linebacker uh, who's expected, again, to be an official visitor uh, here for the Red-White Spring game, as well as another linebacker, a guy who's been on Nebraska's radar for several months out of DeSoto, Texas, a linebacker slash edge rusher uh, prospect, Keelan Abrams. And for a while, it looked like that ship had sailed. Abrams committed to Purdue. Uh, he was locked into the fellow Big Ten school, but ultimately chose to decommit, reopen his recruitment a couple months ago. And this is certainly a name for Nebraska to watch. Um, DeSoto, Texas, that is where Mario Buford comes from, a 2024 commit early enrollee who's already on campus here. And certainly when Nebraska was visiting uh, Buford down at DeSoto during that last cycle, uh, they made a, a really strong connection with Abrams there. Um, wanted him to, to come back to campus. You know, he made that choice to go to Purdue, decommits, and eventually the opportunity is there uh, now this spring for him to take an official visit. Uh, he is certainly one that you could expect uh, maybe to be trending towards Nebraska if that visit goes well. A really strong, productive pass rusher. Can maybe grow into more coverage skills, but be interested to see where, uh, where Nebraska would utilize him long-term if they do end up with him. And... A couple more uh, to wrap up with. Lancaster, California, cornerback. He is Adonis Curry. Um, you see lots of high-level California prospects who play um, you know, at a, at a really strong level of competition. He's one of them. And as well, another Californian prospect, quarterback TJ Latif, four-star quarterback out of Orange, California. Um, this is a big one because you really, with any co college program, you really don't take more than one high school recruit quarterback recruit in a, in a cycle, of course, 2024, Nebraska had a unique one, Dylan Rayola, Daniel Kalen. I mean, the way that that worked out with all the, the twists and turns there towards the end of the recruitment process, I do not think Nebraska is eager to repeat that. And they were certainly, they were looking at a variety of different 2025 quarterback names. Uh, several of them landed other, other places, um, you know, committed before going through this spring. 
um, and the summer process, but they've been there with Latif these last couple months. Um, and he's certainly a name to watch because again, plays at a, a very high level there in California, but worth noting, he did have his uh, junior season was cut short a little bit by injury um, can happen to some of these players. And it's always a good sign when that injury does happen, your recruiting stock doesn't change. Um, that's just a sign of how strong of a prospect he is really great arm strength. Um, a lot of talent from what you see there on film from him so far. And as well, some wide receivers, uh, several wide receivers out of Texas are expected to visit uh, at the end of this spring campaign. Top among them, Lancaster, Texas wide receiver, Emmanuel Choice. Great size, great speed, uh, kind of the all-around wide receiver prospect. So he's another one to watch. And again, Nebraska continuing those efforts uh, within Texas. I mentioned Terrence Knighton, but Emmanuel Choice, that is Garrett McGuire written all over him. Uh, going down and recruiting those Texas wide receivers. Of course, Gary McGuire is head, his father, Joey McGuire, the head coach at Texas Tech, uh, very popular, and so is Garrett McGuire when he's making those recruiting rounds within the state. Um, you know, certainly a, a staff-wide effort down there in Texas, but McGuire and Knighton, two of those guys who lead the way. So that's as it stands, how the recruiting uh, update looks for Nebraska. And of course, the situation, this will change. Uh, you know, by the end of April, a few more commits might trickle in. And certainly, like I said, expect June and July, the bulk of this class to be built by then. And of course, I'll be, uh, I'll be here to provide you with the updates as they come. Everything with that online at journalstar.com, all of our recruiting and football coverage here as spring football continues on. But that will do it for today's Nebraska football recruiting update. Hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.